Hi everyone, I thought I'd take you through uh, a, um, my process for uh, doing uh, a clock. Um, obviously you can see that I've got one here. Um, it's all, I've got these from China and they come packaged like that. It's, it's amazing that they actually uh, stayed together in this very flimsy box. But however, they did, they've come all the way from China and um, we're going to refurbish uh, that and we'll keep the box uh, because we can help with that will help with packaging what I do like is they have these little plastic covers for the hands so um, we will keep that aside as well so firstly um, it's a case of disassembling uh, the product okay so we have I've got some uh, needle nose pliers here uh, just to help with the disassembly. Now they are fairly fragile, so you just got to be careful. But if you uh, if you are careful and just and be gentle with it, everything just pops apart. So there you go. There's the once that once the uh, second hand is off, the rest will come apart very easily. So we don't need our pliers. They will just uh, just pop off. There we go. And the hour hand. Um, what I normally do is I um, I use the little plastic cover um, just to rest the hands in, so that um, not only do we keep them safe all together, but also try not to bend them too much. I mean they will uh, smooth out, but nevertheless it's better if we if you don't have to do it in the first place. So again, just this little single nut, uh, just holding that whole, the whole mechanism in, and that will start to spin fairly quickly and pop off. Now you, uh, we can, you can do this with records. Obviously, um, it's the same principle with records, except that you're not uh, dismantling a clock. But uh, by buying the whole clock, I think I got these from China. I think they were a total of $7. So for $7, uh, I got my baseboard, which is the same size as a record. And of course, I've got the mechanism um, as well. So, and it all comes ready to, ready to go. So for my peace of mind, it was good value. And uh, the $7 was landed here in Australia from China. So um, it's... Uh, because it's all there and everything is the right size, it's easy to go back now. Okay, so we've now um, covered our uh, project with black. I'm going to let it dry and I'm going to use our uh, dust tent to make sure that nothing drops on it while everything is drying. So we shall... set all that up. So, we're about to do a swirl pour. Now, as you remember, we've, uh, we've got our, uh, our clock face. Uh, first thing to do is to make sure that uh, our hole in the back is uh, sealed so we don't have a whole lot of paint coming through just to plug that hole so it's not going anywhere right so the first thing we're going to do I'm, I'm, it, this is going to be very basic but I'm going to what I'm going to do is going to use two colors we're going to use uh, a blue and a red. I'm paying homage to my football team. And uh, we're going to put the black on as a background and this is going to increase the strength of the color. We've seen many ways, well, we've seen the main way where people swirl. They put it all into a cup, they tilt the cup and they swirl it round. I have taken from uh, I guess uh, a cake decorating idea and I'll put the uh, the picture up for you here 
So from this uh, cake decorating idea, I have made myself a swirl uh, applicator. Now, it consists, as you can see, of, uh, of four bottles uh, where the colour goes and one nozzle where the colour comes out. Now, rather than put the, the colour in up the top, what I do is I turn it upside down and as you can see, we've um, uh, cut out the bottoms of the bottles and they fit into the, uh, this section which I turned and hollowed out and uh, I've filled with silicon so that um, you don't get any residue and you can clean it up afterwards. So uh, we're going to put our colours into here, into each of these. Uh, and uh, you can have, as you can see, you can have up to four colours in this applicator. Um, I'm going to fill each of these with a colour each. So we'll have red, red, blue, blue. Um, and the idea is they're all going to come out at once. So in a, tr in a normal pour, uh, where you're using a cup, whatever colour you put in first comes out last. In this situation, right from the beginning to the end, all four colours blend together. So I'm hoping for a consistent um, uh, rings right, at, right across um, uh, the, the, the clock. So that's what we are aiming for. Um, first things first, we'll put it on, a, on the black background, which I don't use the applicator. We just pour that as, per, as normal and make sure that it spreads on the clock. So we're just going to use the black, pour it into the hole. pour it on and I shall I'll use a a, um, a spatula to just to spread it around now we'll fill the applicators as I said before we're going to use both the blue and the red And we're now ready to do our swirl. And so trying to start at the... Oh, hello. I've sprung a leak. Well, that was good, but nevertheless, doesn't matter. Yep. I'm getting a lot of red. Ah, oh, there's the blue starting to come now. Certainly, the 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 blue, um, the red is uh, whether it's my consistency or what it is is running uh, ran first in great uh, in a great quantity, and now the blues are taking over. So it's I'm not unhappy with that. It looks quite quite effective, and we're getting lots and lots of rings. Continue just to let this run. Until about now. Okay. So that's what we've got. Just try and pour and get 
this to move. Now by the way I didn't use any silicon in there. I wasn't interested in getting cells with this one. I just want this to uh, just to have the rings Oh wow, that's just lovely as that's Well, I'm really happy the way that that's coming out. That is marvellous. Just move it a little bit more. Back to the centre. Now we didn't ask for cells, but we've got a couple popping through here and that's the last few drops that's the last few drops that we did in the center um, and oh look at this look at these veins in here that's just beautiful um, oh, I guess because I'm a woodworker and I love grain and, and the natural grain uh, we get in, in, in timber which is beautiful it's like the, it's like um, uh, I guess fingerprints there's never one the same and it's just like our fluid art there's never one the same each of them is just marvellous in uh, in those so look that is just isn't that wonderful I'm so thrilled with that and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens when that dries but those rings I, I, I really really uh, am pleased with so we'll come back when it's dry and we'll put what I plan to do is put in a couple of coats of um, uh, just a, a varnish sealer on it or a spray sealer.